but there may not be another time. Okay, I may never get this chance again. I mean, we may never, you know, be able to return to this, this moment.
Hello, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Hopefully, everyone had a wonderful week. <laughs> okay, Princess Cassandra, let's hear what you bought. Okay, Bonkman was first, guys. As always, he beats you to it every time. Love it, Bonkman. We got a cheese pizza in here today as well. Woo -woo. I'm gonna turn up my mic just a little bit. There we go. So a shout out to Cheese, thanks man. Always good having the Twitch Pizza Master in chat with us. Tedious Tao, good to see you as well. Want to know a good song? It's called Welcome to the Club by Night Court. It's a good rave song. Let's go. Yeah, Friday. It's the weekend. <laughs> and yeah, Sammy's at work. He is helping my dad paint a ceiling today. And then they're going to go do a little bit of baseboard action. And yeah, that's it. Had a wonderful morning. If you guys saw, I was up pretty early in Discord, but did my meditation, did laundry, cleaned the kitchen. It's been a wonderfully productive morning. Also, good morning, Dust Pirate. Yeah, it has been so long. I know, tedious Tao. Things are good here. Yeah, we had such a good week. I feel like I'm just in like a really good headspace, ready to just keep pushing forward and carrying on. I'm feeling, yeah, just like I said, feeling good, guys. Hi, White Dove. Good to see you. Okay. And yes. It's a bit of a different stream today, budget meal. You guys are like, Kate hey, budgets? Guys, we budget all the time. I mean, if you watch the stream, you should know that we like stick to a pretty strict budget and we always try and buy stuff when it's on sale. We don't like paying full price for anything. I mean, that is literally the life hack of Western society. Why, why pay full price for anything, guys? Hi, Hand Stitch, welcome in. Also, Hope you guys had a wonderful week yourselves. I've not really been in touch with what's happening in the news. Maybe that's why I'm like in such a good mood. I don't know what's going on. And sometimes that's good. Whoa, Princess Cassandra. The heck even is that? It's like a pressurized thing of sorts. Or it looks like a little like cheaper version of a thermal mix like does it heat up and blend in there this is madness please tell me more princess cassandra tedious you joined the stream and as soon as you joined the streamer was donated over 500 pounds and you heard a grown man cry <laughs> i know it's a rare occurrence hearing grown men cry but we, we like to see that right is men deserve to show their emotion too so thanks for sharing that Good to limit the news so it doesn't bring you down. Totally, White Dove. And yeah, I was listening to some like positive mindset podcast this morning as well while I was folding laundry. Vacuum the blender before it blends so your ingredients don't oxidate. Whoa. Imagine that for like doing pesto or something or like it showed the tomatoes. And when stored for 24 hours, you keep five times the amount of vitamin C. The things you know. Wow, we just started a stream and we just learned something new. Day complete. Oh, nice. Pork tenderloin stew in your instant pot. That sounds good, Kiwi Mish. What kind of like seasonings did you put into it? I've not had pork tenderloin in like quite a while. Okay, friends. We have two recipes that we are going to be viewing today. And this is a channel point redemption. I hope that Palsh comes in at some point. I talked to him earlier this morning, just letting him know that this is his stream. And he said that his sleep's been kind of messed up. So hopefully Palsh pops in at some point is he redeemed his 50,000 channel points for a menu redemption for me to make something for him. And he loves to budget and make freezer meals is, I know that he lives basically on his own. So yeah, if you're cooking for one, it can be kind of annoying all the time, right? So he likes to do stuff in bigger portions. And then, like I said, pack it away in the freezer. So all you gotta do, take it out and it's good to go. So I found this recipe and it looks absolutely amazing. I've never made it before. And I think it's something that I'm really going to enjoy and Sam as well. 
Yeah, so it was tenderloin, obviously. <laughs> Bouillon, basil, oregano, garlic, onion, and cream. Yum, like a creamy pork tenderloin stew. Sounds good. There are more brands that sell vacuum blenders, but this is the only one that allows you to vacuum the bottle you store it in. That's so nuts. I've never seen anything like that before. So thank you for opening up my mind to small kitchen appliances. Yeah, sleep de deprivation. I have been there as well, like four years ago now or three or four years ago now when my anxiety was like through the roof working in the restaurant. I literally didn't sleep for like two weeks. It was the worst time of my life. So I, I feel you, tedious towel. Oh, sun-dried tomatoes. That sounds good, Kiwi Mish. Okay, here are the recipes, guys. They are also posted in Discord already, so feel free to check them out at any time after this stream. They will be there. I do recommend using the search, I guess, browser, whatever we'll call it, the search function in the Discord in the recipe section because it'll pull up the recipe right away instead of you trying to scroll all the way through. So African sweet potato peanut stew. And then, as always, I keep wanting to try something new with our sourdough discard. So we're gonna do sourdough like chapati or roti. It's kind of the same thing today. And we're gonna make a bunch of those. So kind of like a sourdough flatbread to eat with the stew. Because we've never made this before and this is even something new for me, I wanted to do like a little bit of background and history on this dish so that we really understand what we're getting into and so we show it like the love that it deserves and do it the justice. Sourdough sticks? Sticks to what? You can't sleep without your melatonin. I wonder if you have like a deficiency then. Okay, so the history of African, they call it peanut soup. So soup, stew, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to say it's called stew in like the westernized version or North American version. Sourdough sticks to anything. It's so true. Like when this thing, when I feed it and it like splutes over, what a mess. What a mess. It's so sticky. <laughs> Cheese nose. But somehow, I think because it's been like pretty cool, this little guy, when I fed him yesterday, did not spoot over at all. I was like, oh, okay, so you're behaving this week. <laughs> oh, word, tedious how, yeah, your ADHD meds affect your sleep patterns. Well, at least you know like how to control them. I think that's the most important. Okay, let's go through our history so we can start cooking. And I can also tell you guys, this is a rare occurrence here on the stream too. You guys know we're meat eaters. This can be vegan, vegetarian, etc. whatever you want. I'm not going to make it that because I pulled out some beautiful chicken bone broth to make this stew out of. But by all means, if you're vegan or vegetarian, this is for you. Like just use vegetable broth or water, whatever you want, instead of a bone broth. But I think that we're going to get a lot of health benefits from putting that bone broth in because, like I said, we're used to eating meat and having protein. So it's crazy how, like, satiating and satisfying just the chicken bone broth is in stuff. Like, you get all of the nutrients and it helps to keep you full once you have digested all of the fiber from the vegetables. You branch off a rye starter cheese and that thing is like glue. Oh, so cool. That's so interesting, Tedious Tao. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, I have some family members with ADHD as well, but since they have like gotten older, they've really gotten a hold on it, which is so good to see. Okay, whether you know it as West African peanut soup, Ghanaian groundnut stew. I'm not going to say the other ones. Or mafe. I think I said that one right. Mafe. Delicious peanut tomato stew makes a hearty protein packed meal, which can be enjoyed either with chicken or as a vegetarian entree. I think we can go farther than chicken with this. I think pork and beef would be lovely. Maybe. 
if I would go as far as fish, but like shrimp and fish is good. Like prawns, or sorry, shrimp and peanuts is good. Prawn and peanut, that's a good combo. It's also popularly served during Kwanzaa. While no one knows exactly when or where the first groundnut stew was made, historians generally cite West Africa as the meal's place of origin. Isn't that insane that historians still don't know where some of these dishes have come from? That's pretty mind blowing to me that it's been made for so long, but who knows where it came from? And I mean, it kind of sucks that it wasn't documented. Are they autistic like you as well? No, they are not. They are not. I love how you says it would be funny if they were. Thank you for like seeing the humor in that, I guess. Okay, so from West Africa via South America, so known as ground nuts elsewhere in the world, the legumes are not native to Africa. We're talking about peanuts here, by the way, guys. Ground nuts are peanuts and they are a legume. So they're not native to Africa. They were brought to the continent from South America by Spanish and Portuguese colonists. Therefore, though we don't know when the first African groundnut stew was made, we do know it couldn't have been before the groundnuts themselves arrived in Africa in the early 1560s. So it's been made since around the 1560s, probably they're saying, which is when the peanut first made its way over to Africa. Oh, totally Bonkman, that's exactly it, is I was like going into some pretty deep thoughts on that this morning while I was getting ready for stream. I was like, it sucks that like the dishes that come from the third world countries, they're not, I mean, they're not noted, right? There's not record keeping there just because they're, they don't have the devices to be able to do that. It sucks for sure. Okay, and then it says from there, variations on the stew began appearing throughout West Africa, especially Nigeria, Gambia, and Senegal regions. Oh, tedious. It's Williams, hello. We are doing good. Thank you for asking. Yep, it's wonderful to be at home today. It's not rocking hot. It is yesterday on Vancouver Island. It was apparently the hottest day of the year. It was really hot, guys. It was one of those days where you just like kind of have a constant headache in the back of your head because you know your body's like working so hard to keep you cool. It's like no matter how much water you drink, you're just like <laughs> suffering. <laughs> But yeah, today is so nice and cool. We got some nice cloud cover and it feels good. Mostly verbal histories, Bonkman. And we know that, and we know how those can change or be distorted, the telephone game. Yeah, totally, right? Ugh. It's really hot there, TDS. You have three fans and still sweating in the UK. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And we've had some crazy weather, hey? It's been 30 plus there in Calgary too. You're happy it's not so bad yet. We got a nice cooler day. Yeah, I am fluffy. That's such a nice way to put it. Okay, so one dish, many twists. In general, the stew can be thought of as a kind of sauce served over starch and made with peanuts, tomatoes, and a variety of vegetables. And if you want, you can put some protein in there. But we would say like, I would say traditionally this is vegetarian for sure and maybe on like very special occasions they would add meat to it. Additional ingredients vary by region and can include root vegetables like yams which we are using today so yep sweet potatoes. So I guess yeah this is yam. There are many versions of sweet potato around the world so choose the one that you like the best I'm gonna say. Okay, so root veggies, cooked greens, which I'm gonna pick some of those very large like broccoli green leaves from outside in the garden instead of doing something like kale. We're gonna switch it up today. And as well as various spices can be switched out. 
African cooks generally spoon the peanut stew over rice, couscous, millet, or sweet potatoes. Okay, so there's our sweet potato. Like the ingredients of the peanut stew itself, what starch it is served with and what condiments accompany it depend on the region. Sweet. Okay, that was a good little history. I am happy that we went through that. I think I have a little bit more of an understanding of where we're going with this today. So let's go to our recipe now from Pinch of Yum. This recipe had a lot of great reviews online, which is why I chose it. And then she also gives us options of how to make it. So she gives us instant pot, slow cooker. Today we're gonna be doing it on the stove top together. And then she says you can also freeze it for meal prep. Love all those options, for sure. She says this is cozy and lovely, it's not too spicy, although you could omit the spice altogether if you're worried about that. And then there's something to be said about eating really spicy food when it's super hot out. It has like a cooling effect for you. It doesn't make sense in your head, but it does work. So yeah, I am always down for like spicy foods in the summertime because what? Maybe it makes us like start to perspire and then like when a breeze comes, you feel cool. <laughs> yeah, it makes you sweat. Exactly, Bonkman. It starts cooling you down. She says it has just the right balance of creaminess and kick and it reminds me of another version of a good for you curry. Okay, so prep time, 15 minutes. Cooking time, 20 minutes. What? This is gonna be pretty quick, I'm pumped. Yield five to six servings, about one and a half cups per serving. I would say I would probably gonna crush a good like two cups worth of this for a serving, cause it is just veggies. Like to me, that's gonna be like a nice bowl of the stew or soup, whatever you wanna call it. So it probably makes closer to four servings. And with that being said, just wanna see how many sweet potatoes she uses. Three large. Okay, we're not gonna double it. Plus I'm not sure if Sam is going to like this leftover. <laughs> he doesn't like love vegetarian things, but usually when I make it, he will eat it. Viyoon, hello, good to see you. Hope you are back home, safe and sound. It was so lovely hearing from you when you were in Bulgaria last week, so awesome. Boom, there it is, tedious house. So when we eat spicy food, when it's hot out, it raises our body temperature. The heat in the air isn't as bad because our core temp has been raised. There it is. So William says, it doesn't actually raise the temp. It just makes our body think it's warmer, but the real temp stays the same. Both of those are like kind of true, right? We'll put both of those statements together and just say, yes, guys. <laughs> You're back home being safe and sound. Still can't believe you went and came back in one weekend. Yeah, such a crazy trip. You're like, okay, guys, see you. I'm gonna be in Bulgaria. Don't worry, you will see me. It's like, okay. Okay. Okay, what we need for this recipe. So olive oil, onion. I don't have jalapeno, so we are going to use some of our homegrown like little Thai red chilies. A little bit more spicy anyways, which is lovely. Cooking girl, good to see you. Actually, it's, it's a welcome back to Germany for him, cooking girl. Yeah, he just did a little hop, skip, and a jump. <laughs> oh, Vyun. Discovered new foods over there. Okay, please let us know what was like your most favorite and interesting thing you had in Bulgaria. And you got heirloom tomato seeds. Please let us know also what variety of tomato seeds. I'm interested. Okay, back to our pepper. So onion, peppers, garlic, our sweet potatoes, a can of, she uses fire roasted tomatoes, very fancy. 
I don't think that's necessary. Also, just going by the price point on fire roasted tomatoes compared to, well, your good old diced tomato in the store. I'm pretty sure when I bought a can of fire roast, they're like, six bucks or something for a can where this is way less expensive so if you want fire roasted tomatoes in your stew just do it yourself take a couple of like really nice ripe tomatoes put them under the broiler or if you can put them on the barbecue and just roast them until they're charred there you go that'll be way less expensive than getting it in the can okay along with those so all of our canned items canned tomato we have some well a fresh jar of peanut butter here that we have to mix up for this and i thought i would throw in a little bit of chickpeas today i had hanging around that'll also add some extra protein and filler into the stew which i thought would be perfect and then lastly a can of coconut milk make it a little bit creamy and maybe smooth out the spice a bit your favorite dish view was a simple tomato dish with olive oil and a white cheese called serene a brined white cheese a mix of cow and goat milk so kind of like feta then are there any canned items that i prefer to homemade oh that's an interesting question swilliams i don't really know where i can go with that question I mean, for the most part, I always prefer homemade, but I've never actually canned my own tomato before is we are growing a few varieties this year to hopefully get some canned tomatoes, even if it's just like one can each or one jar each of the tomatoes. So yeah, I don't really know how to answer that one. That's a good question. What about you? How, how would you answer that question? Also, hello, Just Judo. Good to see you. Great to have you in here. Hope you had a good week. The star of the dish view was actually the tomato, which was peeled and served in slices with a bit of the cheese. Tomatoes are so good there, they didn't even season it. It was that good. Dish was served with a great brandy and is supposed to be eaten together. That sounds so nice and simple. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, see, I guess I don't really use that many canned items to be able to be like, I'll do the pumpkin myself rather than canned, but that is a smart one. Cause yeah, doing, trying to can your own pumpkin or using like fresh pumpkin for pies, so much more watery and messy than the canned stuff. I feel you, that's a good point. Okay, so that was our canned items and then the rest of our flavorings and stuff for our stew. So instead of the water, I'm gonna be doing a chicken bone broth because well, that's just way better for us and it has way more flavor. We have curry or turmeric, whatever you're feeling. We might do a little bit of both or make up a, our own little spice mix for this. We need some obviously chopped peanuts as well as peanut butter and then those greens, whether you want kale, cabbage, collards, etc. Go from there. Your week was meh. Yeah, I hope it gets better as well. These heckin' iPads. <laughs> okay, so that's the stew. So we know not a pretty long prep time, not a long cook time. So we have to have our chapati or our chapati ready to go. Chabadi. Don't say it like that. <laughs> and this is also a first for us. So sourdough chapati or roti, whatever you want to say. This prep time, 10 minutes. Cook time, 10 minutes. So this could be a very quick meal for the weekday, especially if you do it slow cooker method. So put everything in the slow cooker before you go to work. And then all you have to do when you get home is spend 20 minutes making the chapatis for yourself. Done. You know what, view? I have not stepped on the scale in probably a good five months. I think I have lost weight and I'm just feeling like so good, so healthy. I have been like doing my meditations and morning yogas. And I think that like, 
it really shows that having a positive and healthy mind shows on your body as well yeah don't even go on this scale this is stupid don't live your life by numbers live your life by like how you feel so thanks for noticing Vune. yeah i'm feeling just great yeah i look my normal age of 21 years old again <laughs> still get I getting id'd at the liquor store okay really simple recipe for the chapati if you want to use whole wheat flour or atta a t t a this is uh something i've never used before so let's uh see what this is atta flour a whole meal wheat flour originating from the indian subcontinent used to make flatbreads such as chapati roti naan paratha and puri it is the most widespread flour in the indian subcontinent boom there it is not really a thing we can find here so yeah whole wheat flour what I'm going to do today, so I'm going to use some of my whole grain all-purpose flour and then sprinkle a little bit of sprouted buckwheat flour in instead. And then all we have to add to that sourdough discard, which we have right here. We fed Goldilocks last night at 7.30 p.m. right on time. And then salt and water and then just a little bit of like oil or butter to drizzle on the roti after nom just put a smiley face sticker over the dial of the scale or just uh throw the scale in the garbage <laughs> you don't own a scale anymore since you gained so much weight from the stupid thyroid yeah problem solved it can mess with your head that's what i'm saying it can throw you off okay so for the chapati what we're gonna do in a mixing bowl, add the flour, sourdough starter discard, and the salt. Mix it roughly using a spoon. This should show how much more water will be needed. Sprinkle water in small batches and knead the dough using the fingers until it's like firm and pliable. And then we rest the dough for 15 to 20 minutes. I would say up to half an hour is usually the resting time for those types of doughs. Divide it into six. We're going to be doing a double recipe today because I love having like little baked bread items to snack on throughout the week. Uh, hold on one sec. I just have a phone call here that I feel like I have to take. It's a local number. Hold on, guys. A scam. They scammed us again, guys. <laughs> I love how they get it with the local number now, too. It's like, oh, it's like someone local calling. No, it's not. Got him. <laughs> yeah, it's either you've won a cruise, Williams, or they're taking you to jail lately. It's either one. Like, your life can go either way when you answer the phone these days. <laughs> I do have an iPhone view. There's this random Google crap calls. What? Okay, what I'm going to do, let's start prepping all of our veggies for our African sweet potato stew. Kind of get everything together and get it started. Then we'll work on our chapati dough, let that rest. And then as we're cooking the stew, and get that together, then we'll cook our chapatis and everything should time out perfectly. Yes, tedious how, yeah. Hello, this is the private police number. How may I help you? <laughs> so Williams, you got three calls this week from people saying you called them. So you guess someone was spoofing your number for a scam. Wow, epic. That's hilarious, tedious. I love you guys. Yeah, get creative with it. Okay, let's get all of our ingredients out. And we're gonna be doing this in our nice green pot today. Let's get some color in here. Yeah, that's true, Bonkman. That's so true. Just don't answer, it's important. They'll leave a voicemail. 
You would hope they would. Oh, thanks, Vyun. I will look at that later. Because, yeah, there was literally a day where I kept getting spam calls. And I just kept blocking the number on my phone. And they just kept calling. Like, seriously, nine, nine of the calls saying they were taking me to jail within seven hours. I was like, this is insane. Oh, Swilliams, this apron. My man, now is the time. I'm not sure if Will still has... 20% off on this store as well as my 15% off but these are handmade in Vancouver by my wonderful wonderful friend Will he started this business on his own with his wife and actually I have something really great to show you with this apron that I screenshotted I think it was last week is he has people from all over the world wearing this Oh, maybe I didn't screenshot it. But just the other day on Jamie Oliver's Instagram is his son was wearing the apron that Will sent to him. And it just has like the canvas neck strap instead of the fancy leather one, but it's so awesome. So yeah, like you can see Jamie Oliver's son wearing this apron and cooking online. So there's a reason why I wear it. It's like my suit of armor and I have no bad things to say about these. That is amazing. Okay, so they've made their way, yeah, obviously to Calgary. You're just looking at it in your local knife store like last week. Yeah, dude, I mean, use my code if you want 15% off the order. He is always down to support people that love to cook. I mean, Sam and I were his first kind of guinea pigs on wearing the aprons in kitchens. Pretty sweet. Hi, Kay Bolton, good to see you. Hope you're doing good. Okay, let's get our onion, garlic. I also am gonna sneak a little bit of celery in this today just cause I have to use it up. Also unsure of the integrity of these onions. So we'll see what's going on in there. Thank you for the host. You're gonna be doing t level two catering soon, sweet. I didn't know you did that. That's awesome. You made the potato salad today, Suavita Sanchez, that I made last week. What should you say? Everyone was thrilled. Aw, thank you so much for sharing that. We still have a little bit left over in the fridge. I've been like picking on it throughout the week. So good. So yeah, she made the, what was it? Roasted corn and pepper baby potato salad with creamy dill dressing. So good. Yeah, revolving potato has been summoned. Welcome in. I love that. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I love hearing that you guys are making the food we're making on stream. That's the whole point of this. Yeah, they have a Vancouver store, Williams. Actually, Will just expanded his retail space this year. They've been doing so good. They just got them in Calgary because apparently the owner initially insisted on hand delivering them on his bike. At least that's what they said. I believe it. I believe that he would take his motorbike from Vancouver all the way there to deliver it. That is how Will is as a person. Nos Flakeratu, thank you for the follow. Oh my God, Astro, 36 Celsius today. I'm sorry to hear that. I really am. We had 32 Celsius today, which feels rocking hot when you get the humidity in there. And very happy that today is not that. What are we? What are we feeling? Do we want a little bit of ginger in here? I feel like it would be really yummy to put in here. Cause it's kind of like a curry thing going on. I don't know if it's super traditional to do though. So maybe we should leave it out. Actually, we'll, uh, we'll go with the health benefits. I want to put it in. <laughs> I've had a hankering for ginger lately. Okay, we got that. Oh, just found a little extra onion in here first. 
You guys are also just like boiling alive. Well, it is nice to see that summer did finally show up though, right? Okay, that, our celery, cause it's gotta be used up anyways. And I'm just gonna tie my hair back for now because it's annoying me already. Has anyone ever had this dish before? Or even made it? You could do fall all year round, no summer needed. You're the same as Sam, exactly the same. He despises the heat and summer. That's why he moved from Ontario. <laughs> He's just dying yesterday. Okay, awesome. So this is all this is all new for us. I like when that happens on stream. Yeah, your puffer begs for a walk all day, but you can't do it with him. It's just not good. Even the doggo shouldn't be outside in that weather because they just don't know how hot it is for them and then they might overheat. Yeah, that's like Sam. He literally starts to like feel sick when he gets too hot. It's crazy. Okay, that, peanuts. I keep my peanuts all the time, guys, in the freezer. Any kind of nut or seed really benefits from being kept in the freezer is just because of the fat in here, they can go rancid or like bad really quickly if you leave them out at room temp. So keeping them cold will preserve them for longer. Yeah, all year autumn, just imagine that. Cardigans and orange leaves and pumpkin spice lattes forever. Freeze the nuts. All summer. <laughs> okay, I'm feeling good about it. So onion, celery can go together in a bowl. Garlic and ginger can go together in a bowl. Those are gonna get sauteed separate. And then we'll put our sweet potatoes in a bowl as well. And then lastly, I'll pop outside real quick and grab those broccoli greens. So Avia, you love autumn and winter. In summer, you can lie around naked and sweat anyway. Yeah, the less clothes, the better. <laughs> I like that rule as well. I think autumn is just so beautiful, right? Okay, let's get cooking, guys. Enough this chit chat. Let's get to work. Okay, Bolton, yep. Always great to learn something new in the day. warm days and crisp nights. Do I hold my knife every time I cook? Pretty much, I would say, Williams. pretty much. And I would recommend that for anyone, is it's so much easier to just keep your edge on your knife than to not do what I just did with my steel and just let it get super dull and then have to sharpen it. So this is maintenance. This is not sharpening. This is just maintaining your blade because, well, it deserves that. Yeah, okay, boss. You can't handle doll knives. Me neither. Me neither. And I do have to sharpen this. I'm going to do that on Monday because also really great thing that Sam and I realized this week is we get along weekend is on Monday here where we're at. It's called BC day. So we have the day off. I think I'm going to sharpen my knife on that day. Yeah, doll knives lead to accidents. Clean up my board. I just did a fresh little oil on my cutting board before stream as well. Protected. Okay, one small bowl. And then I'll just get a small container for the ginger and the garlic. Let's get going here, guys. 
Yeah, you guys don't have a long weekend, right, Williams? It's literally just our province that has Monday off. Or am I wrong? Okay, let's get into this. So cut the bottom off and then the top part where the leaves are. Surprising, but many people don't know that the celery leaves are pretty bitter and they don't actually taste that nice. So I like to trim them off. But sometimes if you do taste them and they're pretty mild, they are nice to use as garnish. So you don't always have to discard. You think you do, but you have no idea why. <laughs> okay, next up for the celery. So it's usually pretty dirty in the bottom here. So just rinse that off. And then the next step is going to be cutting it Oh, nice and bite size. Anytime we're making a soup or a stew, something that's going to be eaten with a spoon, you want everything to be nice bite size so you can get oh, a little bit of everything on your spoonful, right? You don't want really big chunks of everything. Tedious towel. You're not a psycho. You like the sound of a knife sharpening? To me, it's like very soothing sound. So I feel ya. I feel ya. Okay, anything that's like longer than your knife blade as well. Let's back it up a bit there. Cut it into like four to six inch lengths. Just be way easier to cut. Okay, now we have pieces that look like that. And we can come back across and I think we're gonna go for like a half inch kind of dice today. So slice lengthwise and then we'll come back across and do our dices after. That guy's pretty small. Like a three different piles organize it, and then we can come across. Nice small pieces. Also, I'm like trying to sneak this in here and we'll cook it out really well with the onion. I also thought this would just go really well with all of the ingredients in this stew. Sharpen almost entirely by sound. Hey, there is something to be said about that. I cook a lot of the time just by sound, for sure. It's like, usually I have my back turned to the stove, right? It's like, I can tell how something's cooking just by listening to it. And that just comes with time and experience, for sure. <laughs> Sneaky celery, yep. Sam despises raw celery, but he doesn't mind it cooked into things. And well, I just didn't want it to get wasted in the fridge. I don't have any other plans for it this weekend. So we're sneaking it in, sneaky cheeky. Okay, into our onions. So we have a white onion as well as a yellow onion. This one, I don't know what's gonna happen when we cut into it, but it feels a bit soft, so. Oh no. Sea breeze, or sorry, sea breeze. I remember that from last time. How are you? And good fork, thank you for that follow. Welcome in. Hope you enjoy your time here. Okay, we are going to cut that in half as well. And this one, oh God, not a good start. I hate when that happens. It's like, here's your fresh onion. <laughs> it's like, I don't even want that on my cutting board. For 
ever unclean. Oh, Lord. We're just, uh, gonna do that. Okay, get the other side. Also, in my experience, I find that yellow onions go bad way quicker than the white onion that we have over here. Like, I don't typically buy yellow onions anymore. Because they always just go moldy within like a week. I don't know if it's just the thing where we're at or what. Okay, I'm going to rinse this and then we're also going to wash that area. Yeah, just bought this yesterday. <laughs> Aw, Vion, thank you. And thank you, Bonkman, for sharing the knife link there. Yeah, Seabreeze, this is a Shun is the brand. Absolutely lovely knife. And, well, you don't have to go to this extent or even series from Shun. I would say even just like... The basic shun is a great starting point if you love to cook. I'm not even crying. It's true tedious towel. There's no tears so far from these onions. Madness. Is it true that if you put cut onions into water for 15 minutes, they lose some of their bite, so it's better to use in salads? Yep. That is true, Vune. It's a trick. Yours go bad quickly too, Judo, but also the red one's quicker than the white. Ooh, that is true. Yep. I remember that from being in the restaurant. Hi, Cookie. Good to see you today. Hope you are doing good. Yep. Happy Friday, sir. I know. That's the only thing I miss in Bonkman is like a little cellar for all of the onions, potatoes, garlic, etc. You're welcome, Seabreeze. Okay. So let's kind of cut onion, same-ish size, half inch around there. We'll come in, do our slits, and then I also follow the curve of the onion. And then you can see how I'm leaving about a half inch at the top as well, where I'm not cutting through it at all. So it's keeping all of our slices together. Let's do it this way. Trim that off a bit more. This guy's falling apart a bit, but that's okay. Yeah, we need the root cellar. I remember it from my mom's mom's, my mom's mom's house, my baba's house. There's a, a very creepy root cellar through like a little wooden door through the floor. I don't think I actually like went down there, but I did check it out from above and I was like, ah, no, I'm, that's a hard pass from me. I was so young though. But like, that's the stuff I'm talking about. That's what we need. Except we definitely can't do that here because we are built on top of rock. A bit of effort involved in that one. Whoa, according to Kenji Lopez Alt, you guys know we love him here. He's from Serious Eats. Cutting with the onion grain or rings makes them less bitter. What? Here we go. Learning all kinds of stuff today. Okay, now we're gonna come back and do our dices. Once we get to this point, 
where we've like run out of all of our sliced part. I just like to flip that over and then do nice little pieces like this. You have the one shun knife on your wish list for ages, Judo. You need to buy it at one point. Yeah. You still have awful pink knives from your student times. Ah. <laughs> hey, at least, you know what? It's always really fun to work towards a goal, right? It's like work towards getting something new when you know you need it and deserve it. One dish Vune's been making a lot recently is a salad, usual suspects with tomato, cucumber, Roma salad. Wait, what's Roma salad? Romaine? Onions with a white brine, cow cheese, and steak. Steak salad in the summer. Sometimes there's nothing better, man. For sauce, you're making Caesar sauce. Yes! Oh man, yeah. Like Caesar, Caesar dressing with beef. Very good. <laughs> saw those sneaky pieces. I was like, you're not chopped. You think it's romaine? It's called Roma salad there though. It's what you would use for like Caesar salad then? Yeah, that's romaine. Okay, there we have it. Our onions and celery are all chopped up and ready for our stew. I think carrots would be lovely in here as well. But I'm gonna keep just the sweet potato for the root vegetable. Here come the tears. I don't know why they're just hitting me now. Okay, set that aside. Just by your pot that you're gonna cook everything in. Just gonna rinse my knife off. You bought the magnetic knife holder last month, Judo. You'll pit it up or you'll put it up and not put the pink ones on it. <laughs> There's nothing to say that those pink ones are not all right to use. Nike, my dude. Yeah, big onions don't cry. Do you see tears here? <laughs> For some reason or another, today we're not crying. Hey, I said we were having a great day, guys. Yeah, a very sneaky stew, Swilliams. Do I like mung beans? I am not against mung beans, that's for sure. What do I like to make with them? So I have never made absolutely anything with mung beans before. I've had them in a few like Asian dishes. But yeah, other than that, I don't really use them. So sad to say, I guess I have to cook more mung beans in my life. But there's 10 impressive health benefits of them. Small green beans that belong to the legume family. They look like kind of similar to peas, right? Slightly sweet taste and are sold fresh as sprouts or as dried beans. Ooh, that's what I do have. I think, I believe I have a little packet of like mung bean sprouts for sandwiches or something. It says they're incredibly versatile and typically eaten in salads, soups, and stir fries. High in nutrients and believed to aid many ailments. Whoa, we need to eat more mung beans, guys. This is what we're talking about. That's the plan, Bonkman. Yeah, we're gonna cook those onions and celery down real good, and he'll never know. Even if he does know, he'll be okay. He'll be okay. 
The mung bean is a staple in Filipino cuisine. So, Vyun, then Vyun is a better person to ask then, I suppose. Okay, Bolton, what type of dishes do you put them in? Back to it. Let's get into our garlic. Oh, also, so we went to Costco this week and they had a 10 pound bag. You guys know the little warba potatoes, the pink and white potatoes we've been using? 10 pounds for $5. I was like, I love the potatoes, but there's absolutely no way I'm gonna use that up in a short enough time without it going bad. So I did not pick up the 10 pounds worth. I was like, that is such a crazy good deal. I wish I could. Yeah, bay <laughs> Vian says, on the top of his head, there's mung bean pork soup with spinach and tomatoes. Yum. <laughs> Nike. <laughs> so good. Okay, next step. I'm definitely using more garlic than the recipe is calling for, but that's okay. Let's smash it so we can peel it easier. Oh, just make a massive batch of garlic roasted potatoes. I know. I know my mind was just going when I saw that. But I also despise like throwing out food. So like I said, I, I thought it was smarter to not get that much. You know what we're gonna do with this garlic, guys? We're just gonna slice it up so we get all these nice garlicky chunks in the stew. Nike, I saw that you've been drawing again and I'm absolutely loving it. Please don't stop. I love just seeing your imagination and your creativity and yeah you have some skill there man i cannot really draw that well so i definitely appreciate seeing that yeah all of the garlic yeah why is there not a garlic deodorant seriously fly don't even start with us today Yeah, imagine if garlic wasn't a thing. I couldn't. Imagine, okay, here's my deep thought of the day, guys. Imagine being a person that like discovers a vegetable or yeah, any type of like vegetable or fruit for the first time ever. Like who's the person that discovered you could eat garlic? how crazy of a feeling and experience that would be. Like just for you as a person. But I don't think that's like really gonna happen anymore. I think the world has found all of the ingredients. What do you guys think? Or will there be like new ingredients discovered as the world goes on? You grew up excluding garlic from your food because your father can't eat it. Needless to say, now you embrace the garlic in your cooking. That's so good to hear, hand stitch. It's nice that you knew what you were missing, right? <laughs> yeah, Bonkman. <laughs> The pro garlic groups. <laughs> what are my opinions on smashing garlic versus not? I always smash the garlic, Williams. Always. Mm. 
I got first timer eating garlic. Hey, I didn't die and this tastes really great. Just a bit spicy on the palate raw. Just a touch of spice there. <laughs> Maybe accidental crossbreedings could happen, but we want it to happen naturally is what I'm saying, sea breeze. Okay, this is a very small chunk of ginger that's been uh, hanging around, but it is very nice and yellow inside still. So I'm gonna try and peel this up as best as I can without wasting too much of it. And then we'll mince that up really nice and fine. Making sure Sam's not messaging. Oh, that's unreal, Nike. Yeah, in other news, I might become a school photographer. That is unreal. See, I told you, when one door closes, another one opens, and that one will be right for you. But who knows, maybe that's not even the one, right? You just gotta keep going, my man. And it never hurts to try different things, either. Like, I literally stumbled into cooking. It was terrifying at first, but look at, look at us now. Tombstone, to walk in the stream not hearing that in context, you wonder if their dad was a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> what, you can't with ginger judo? I love ginger. I think it's like one of my favorite ingredients. I love it raw, I love it cooked, I love it in sweet or savory things. And yeah, it's just so good for you too. And you guys see how I'm using the back of my knife to peel this? I feel like it wastes less of the flesh. Are you guys cooking anything today? I always love to ask that in chat. You guys know what I'm cooking, but what are you guys cooking? Shallot seems like a natural cross breed between onion and garlic. I agree, Bonkman. I'm with you on that. It's pretty natural, right? But is it though? I guess we'd have to look it up and see if it's natural or man-made. Use a spoon. That is also a great one, Tombstone. Thank you for sharing that. Is just use a spoon to peel the ginger the same way I did with the back of my knife. It's safer, right? <laughs> okay. Because this is such a small little piece, I think we're just gonna slice it and then give it a rough kind of dice afterwards. So nice thin slices, and we're going across the hairs. Across those tough woody ginger hairs. All right, now I'll just come back across. Start chopping it up. Pretty much equal parts of ginger and garlic here, which I think is gonna be great. Prepping a spatchcock chicken cooking grill for the Peruvian dish you made before. Oh man. You did also, and it was so good. Okay, that chicken dish, one of my favorites. Like the Peruvian chicken, and then as well as the buttermilk roasted chicken we did last weekend, that one was so good too. Sounds like we're making this again for sure. Okay, go over this one more time. Yes. 
Yeah, bananas are like one of the most messed up things we eat. Hey, it's like just totally modified. That was a good little mince up. Man, that's gonna smell so good when we start sauteing everything later. Okay, there we go. We got our ginger and garlic. Judo, parents invited you to an Italian pizza today, so no cooking for you. Boom, that's how it's done, right? Cooking girl, you're doing a repeat. Also prepping for homemade mustard, pickles, cheesecake, and bread. Yum. You're busy. And yeah, the green sauce, out of this world. Peruvian chicken with green sauce. You want to change your life? That's where to start. <laughs> I think there's a lot of things. Isn't there a list of like 12 things, I believe, Tombstone? I believe there's a list of like 12 foods and it is mostly the foods that we eat whole, like tomatoes, cucumbers, other ones like that, that are the most modified. So it's always recommended to buy those organic. <laughs> Pretty crazy. We're going really deep today, guys. Okay. So we do need just a little bit of olive oil still to saute all of our veggies in. We'll grab that out. We have our onion. We don't have our peppers yet. And I'm gonna do whole peppers. And why don't we pick some of the dried ones this time? Just because I know we're gonna be simmering this for a little bit. What should I do? Four? Four of the little homegrown chilies. We gotta start using them up. Cause this year's are already uh, ripening. Make it burn. Six Nike? Oh. Just make Sammy curse me later. <laughs> what have you done, Kate? Trino, I like eggs. I also like eggs. Yeah, we need the ice cream. Okay, the peppers, complete garlic. Okay, our sweet potatoes next. And then we will open all of our canned items, get our spices together, and then we're gonna start cooking. How do we store the chilies dried? Literally just like how you saw me have them. Nothing really fancy. Like I don't even vacuum seal them. I could, but yeah, just like this in a little airtight container. And then the other way that I preserve them is I kept some dried and then I froze some whole. So if I want like a fresh chili, then I just take it out of the freezer, let it thaw and slice it up that way. But typically I use the dried ones in soups and stews. Cause like I said, they'll simmer out and soften up and get the flavor that way. Yeah, my pepper plants are doing really good now too with this last hit of sun that we had. Let's get into our sweet potatoes. And I will let you guys know that the sweet potato, actually one of my least favorite ingredients. I know that's hard to believe. I just think that it's really, it's just too sweet for me on its own. So I typically pair it with like something either creamy or in this instance, spicy or like curry sauce. But for me to just have this like boiled and buttered, I could not eat it. I, that's like the Kate gagging. I don't know why, I don't know what it is. It's just not my thing. I, you know what though, Williams? Yeah, so the only other way as well that I'll eat sweet potatoes is fries. 
like spicy sweet potato fries. So I'm interested. I think I'm gonna like this one today. First step though, we gotta peel it up. Gotta peel these potatoes. I wish we could leave it on, but usually they're like so bunged up and just dirty that we just have to peel them. Palooza, how's it going? Torino, I love your closet garden, man. The things that you grow in your closet. That's some commitment. Most people have plants in their closet. Nope. He's got peppers and probably dill. Palooza's growing herbs in his closet. Yeah, you're. <laughs> You don't like the texture cable? Me neither. Way too much for me. Way too much. That's why I think like a soup or a stew is gonna be good. It's gonna be a thing that I can eat these in. You don't like mushrooms? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say, you probably should be sad about that, Swilliam. I'm sad for you. And like you've tried them recently and you still don't like it. Cause there's so many different varieties of mushrooms out there that you might find one, especially if you can find it wild that you do enjoy. Wild mushroom way different than the cultivated ones in the store. Baked sweet potato with malt vinegar is tasty, Minuteman. Ooh. Yeah, I could probably try that one. The acidity will cut down the sweetness. But like I said, it's the texture when it's like baked or boiled. It's just so soft. Definitely a person that enjoys texture in their food. Complete. It's literally the only one, Williams. You try them all the time too and you just can't. That's awesome though, that you're always trying to like it. Cause like, you know, it's such a good ingredient. <laughs> so tip and top it. Do one more trim of that bruised piece. Yeah, mushroom sauce, so good. You guys know, tombstone, chanterelles or truffles. Tomorrow on stream, we're doing a, I think I'm gonna do lobster mushroom and maybe oyster? Maybe lobster mushroom and oyster mushroom, like a beef demi to go with the steaks. Okay, our sweet potatoes. So the onions and celery, we cut to about half inch size. I think we should go like third inch size for this. Yeah, texture way more important than taste. Is it though? I think both have to go hand in hand, Kay Bolton. Okay, I'm gonna do this into four, I think. So go in half. Like that, so then we have pieces like this that are all consistent and then we'll come make our strips and then do our dices. So I like to put the sweet potato on the flat side. I just feel like it's a lot safer and easier to cut. Mmm, spaghetti with butter and truffle. Judo. Speaking of pasta, that's what we're doing on Sunday stream. Some carbonara, my absolute favorite pasta in the world. 
So we're gonna do fresh noodles. We're gonna pick some peas and fava beans from the garden to put in there. Use our homemade bacon. It's gonna be good. That right there, I know. I don't like cutting sweet potatoes either. I really don't bonk, man. Okay, there we go. We'll get one more bowl out. Actually, we gotta save this bowl for the chapati dough. So we'll just put this in a little pie pan. Is it because of the wedge? Maybe. Maybe we can't get them like perfectly cubed. <laughs> okay, so we should be able to stack it two by two for like the flat pieces. And we do all the outside pieces separate. So that and that. Okay, sweet. Sammy, taste over texture for him as well. If it tastes good, you'll eat it no matter the texture. Oh, that's true, yep. Sam's good for that. <laughs> Not that we've made many things that like were too mushy or anything like that. Okay, here we go. Look at our nice little sweet potato cubes. And then with us simmering the stew with the sweet potatoes, I would say these will cook in about 20 minutes or so with this size that we cut. So keep in mind, the bigger you cut your veggies, the longer it's gonna take to cook. And then we also want everything nice and consistent in size so you don't have crunchy sweet potato and mushy. <laughs> Bonkman, you're just scarred from all the sweet potato casseroles you've had to make. That's for sure one that I could never, never eat. At least I don't think so. Be way too sweet for me. Okay, this little end piece there. Cut on its own. Nice salmon. Finishing up those baseboards. I was there yesterday, guys. Sold me on that then, Bonkman. The sweet potato casserole with crunchy pecan topping. Might have hit the sweet spot for me. for sure. I mean, definitely I don't have the highest spice tolerance, but I'm working on it. And yeah, like I said, I enjoy spicy food. The only thing that holds me back, Tombstone, is with some spicy foods that I eat, I get hiccups, like instantly, as soon as I swallow it. And it just makes it like hard to eat the food so it's not as enjoyable. But yeah, other than that, love to eat spicy foods. Usually if you're a sweet fan, you're not a spicy fan, vice versa. 
Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Definitely had more of a sweet tooth when I was younger. Like, as I got older, I just, I don't know, I don't love it as much. Don't crave the sweet thing, which is good. Okay, almost done these sweet potatoes and then we're getting started, I think. There's gonna be some cooking coming up. And as you guys can see, this is a really great recipe for practicing your knife skills at home. though bonkman like as we as we age we don't crave sweets as much i don't know i feel like we're pretty pumped with sugar though when we're young like all of the little snacks and stuff that we have as kids like we're used to wanting and maybe even needing the sugar for energy <laughs> only thing i crave now guys is coffee <laughs> There's the truth comes out. We just crave caffeine. You drink really sweet, Judo? Yeah, that's where I'm like absolutely no sweets is in my beverages. Okay, we got some stacks here, guys. Next up. Some cans to open. We got some peanut butter to stir up. Boom, boom. 100% natural, unsalted, literally just peanuts. That's my favorite peanut butter. Yeah, maybe we just switch the drugs, Palooza. We go from sugar to caffeine. <laughs> So our diced tomatoes, I think I would use diced tomatoes for this because once again, it's a texture thing. But I guess if you wanted like a smoother kind of stew or soup, you could go with the pureed or crushed version. So we'll just set that over by the pot as well. Our coconut milk. And this has been the loveliest coconut milk I have bought from this store so far. So if you can find this brand, it was also the least expensive, which in my mind doesn't make sense. Eight treasures. Studies have tested how much sugar children can tolerate. The spoon sugar into a cup of water and there was no limit. It's likely because sugar is so important for growth when you're young, yeah. The body hasn't evolved with processed sucrose, so it becomes destructive. What? Yeah, sugar, just easy carbs for like the brain to get energy, but it's not good for us like for the rest of our body, like Bonkman said. Tombstone, you have an interesting way you do sweet potato casserole. You make sweet potato croquettes, breaded with puffed rice and panko with honey date glaze, drizzle and chopped roasted pecans. Okay, I am in. Those are some textures that I could definitely get behind. Sweet potato croquette, Gonna be like crunchy and fried on the outside. Yum. Okay, we're sneaking. Once again, we're sneaking the chickpeas in. <laughs> Sneakiest stew you'll ever make, guys. Because, well, they're great for a protein source. They have lots of good fiber for us. And I think it's just a great filler. So I like to drain the liquid out of there as well. Also, 
here's a pretty cool life hack is for our vegans apparently you can use the chickpea like water from the can the juice that i'm draining out in place of egg white in certain desserts and stuff never done it but that is something i've heard so thought i would share Save the liquid for aquafaba for a, a latte? What? What is that? Aquafaba, okay. You guys are teaching me so many things today. That's what it's called. I need to look this up, Tombstone. Let's get on the Googler. The viscous water in which legume seeds such as chickpeas have been cooked due to its ability to mimic functional properties of egg whites in cooking. It can be used as a direct replacement, even including in meringues and marshmallows. Boom, there it is. First thing off of Google. Okay. Yeah, non-dairy foam. I'm actually surprised you didn't know that Bonkman. Okay, that should help us mix this up. This is literally gonna take us a few minutes right now. Don't know if anyone else ever buys natural peanut butter where the oil separates. Yeah, it would be for sure like the starches in it that give you those abilities. Oh man, this guy is thick. Holy smokes. So this just shows how much oil is actually in peanuts when you just blend them up on their own and don't add anything. Something like the smooth peanut butter from Kraft, it's whipped with extra oil. So they've buffed it out with even more fat for you. So more fat, less peanuts. Yeah, that sounds great, doesn't it guys? And they've just uh, emulsified the fat in and they've whipped it to put more air into it as well. Those are the secrets. The one thing I know Palooza, it's like, okay, trying to get this peanut butter in the smoothie in the morning and it's taken us all morning to just mix it up. But I find that once we get it going, like I kind of just use a little plunger motion and get the oil down to the bottom part where it's super thick. Once we get that going, we're good. Plus it's a little workout. so oily it's crazy <laughs> cookie yeah paying for air brilliant <laughs> welcome to north america most things are a trap let's just be honest here yeah i know peanut butter it makes us hungry I'm so excited to make this recipe today. It might be another one of those like vegan dishes that I can get down with. Like I'm down for eating vegetarian vegan as long as it's like filling and there's lots of flavor in it. loser yeah i'm not opposed to vegan food just vegans i'm not opposed to vegans at all let's just be clear on that absolutely adore them as people because well they're literally trying to save the world for the rest of us as long as they don't project their food thoughts and this fly is going to die by the way 
long as they don't project our food thoughts on us. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but don't tell other people how they should be eating. Okay, we're almost there. See how that, all the oil went back in? There's a couple of big chunks still, but that's fine. We've done good, guys. <laughs> Beet sauce spaghetti, one of your favorite vegan dishes. Whoa, that is also probably very colorful as well. Beet sauce spaghetti. Okay, next up. So it only calls for about two cups of water or stock, but I did pull two liters worth because I think we're going to end up with a little bit more than this recipe is calling for. Okay, and then our salt and pepper, obviously. Curry and or turmeric. Definitely not going to leave the turmeric out because that's another one with really great health benefits for us. And then curry is not usually something I keep in the house, like curry spice. I do have something very similar to like a garam masala, which would be nice. But yeah, yellow curry is one, uh, once again, not my favorite thing. I think there's way better curries and I always like to make up like either my own fresh curry base, like in the blender with everything blended or mix all the fresh spices together. Okay, our chopped peanuts, so half a cup and then a quarter cup of that peanut butter. Lastly, before we start, just gonna go grab a few of those broccoli leaves from outside. We'll get that chopped up. So near to cooking. I'll be right back, guys, actually. My mic will be okay out there. It'll be just fine. Whew, the sun's coming out. Big old broccoli greens. to save spider bro i'm sorry spider bro but you're not coming inside with us you got to go shake him off he did get a fly though that's good he's protecting it he's like but kate please we'll take this other last one here it's a little bit chewed up by the worm leaves, but that's okay. It's going into a stew. Boom. These biggins. Kate versus broccoli greens. Well, they're about half of the size of me. <laughs> So this is from a purple sprouting broccoli plant. So it produces these wonderful kind of like collard green-esque leaves. And then right before the plant finishes, it, we get like this little kind of broccolini sprout right in the middle with purple florets. And yeah, really nice. And I love how sweet, like it really does taste like broccoli with just the greens. <laughs> Williams. Yeah, the lead up starting to the cook, always exciting, perhaps because I'm a deeply boring person. I would never say that about anyone. I think we're all unique in our own ways. Green curry, I think tombstone is my absolute fave. Okay, let's start processing these. I just picked out my salad spinner so we can wash this up. 
and then dry it off after too because well we're growing it in our an in an organic garden who knows what's on here so first things first we're gonna zip it so just hold the stem with one hand and then come across and just pull it and we'll take that woody stem out of there although doggo doesn't mind it it's just you can see how stringy it can be so it's not really the greatest thing to try and utilize anywhere else Yeah, we're all special snowflakes. Exactly, Judo. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Pluser. Okay, just going to discard this back to Mother Nature. Yum, gotta love water. Okay, now let's kind of stack the leaves up together. Kind of keep that separation in the center so you can see where to cut. <laughs> yeah. Some might call that dandruff. The special snowflakes? <laughs> oh, I love it, Tombstone. The humor. Okay, so we cut that down lengthwise and then we really only want about like one inch size cubes of these greens. So let's make some one inch lengths. Kind of holding everything down. And then I turn it this way and then I can come back across and dice it up. If you want, you could also kind of stack it up. And this way we don't have like stringy greens that we're trying to eat in the soup with a spoon. And then these are gonna be put in basically right at the end before we're ready to serve, just to cook them through and soften them, that's it. It doesn't need a long cook time at all. Stack all of these little guys up. Now this one. Also hear like how crisp they are, right? Just really great. We've also been putting them in our morning smoothies. We always put some kind of green veg in, whether it's kale or this. Not bad at all. Yeah, stringy greens in a soup, just like hanging off of your spoon. Just kind of looks like snotty. You're like, oh no. Yeah, call them out, Bonkman. That's a faux pas. Rinsey, rinse, rinse. Beautiful. We got a scammer? Oh no. Just uh, rolling right along here on our scamming day. I didn't even see what it was, so thank you. <laughs> Why do I always have my back turned and I miss out on these moments? Gosh.
We're all spun off. How much water did we get? Pretty good amount. That's why we do that. Okay guys, hold tight real quick. I'm gonna pop out for a quick little bathroom break, 30 seconds or so. Be right back. Okay, let's get started. Even so bad you reported them? Also, hello, Claire Coffee. <laughs> Just emerging from around the corner there. How's it going? Okay, I think before we start cooking, or actually, let's start heating up that pot because it's gonna take a few minutes. Get our oil in there. While that's heating up, we'll mix up our chapati dough. And then while we're simmering everything, that can rest. And then everything will be good at the same time. So let's start this pot on a medium high heat. Don't wanna go too, too high because olive oil doesn't have a very high smoke point for cooking. But I do love to use it for like bases when we cook vegetables and soups and stews. So just enough to kind of cover the bottom of the pot there. There's a little view. I'll let that start heating up. As soon as it's warm, we'll pop those onions and celery in and start cooking them down for probably a good 10 minutes or so. Yeah, just melting a little bit. That was me yesterday. <laughs> Things are good here. Yeah, thanks for asking. Type of person can cost them their platform. Wow, okay, well, thank you for reporting that. Cause like I said, I didn't even see what happened. You guys are always on it. And thank you for that. Cause sometimes I don't need to see that. Okay. Homemade chapati with sourdough discard. Here we go again. I'm doubling up this recipe. So instead of six, I'm gonna get 12 because I think this is gonna be great for snacking. I can see this with like peanut butter and jam rolled up into there. Heck yeah. Oh, wow, Bonkman. <laughs> Sad. Okay, so what we need. Oh, cookie. Thank you for gifting the sub to Claire. Claire, you've been subscribed for 10 months in a row now. Wow, we're almost at a year. Just past our Twitch baby. So we need three cups of whole wheat flour or atta, if you can get your hands on it. And then eight tablespoons of sourdough starter discard. So I'm gonna put that into milliliters. So each tablespoon is 15 mils. So at 120 mils then of sourdough starter discard. Yeah, we missed the Twitch baby. 
<laughs> and then salt and then just enough water as needed to kind of bring the dough together. So what we're gonna do, mix our flour, sourdough discard and salt, just roughly with a spoon it says, and then just slowly oh, add water yeah. and knead until it is a soft and pliable dough. Titan, hello, welcome in. Starting the day off with a casual nine month resub. Oh, there's the baby. We might have missed Claire's Twitch baby, but we did get Titans. What are we gonna name it, Titan? Thank you, sir. Hope you're doing well, you and your bees. <laughs> okay, so I have a whole grain all purpose flour that we get milled locally here in the province. So it's not whole wheat per se, like a whole wheat flour. I think I'm gonna put some buckwheat flour in instead. So we need three cups worth. So I'll do two and a half cups of this flour and then I'm gonna do half a cup of the sprouted buckwheat flour just for something a bit different. Hi, Laughing Wolf. Thank you for that host. How have you been? Yeah, you have a baby and it's not yours. I demand a DNA test. This is what I'm talking about. This one's also local. Milled in Chilliwack, so sprouted buckwheat flour. And they say, Sprouted grains are a lot easier for us to digest. Yeah, a pretty fancy flower, but I really, really love this one. Something about buckwheat flour, it has this nice nuttiness to it. So that's our little bit of whole grain, let's say. Yes, oh man. My other favorite preparation with buckwheat is soba noodles for sure, tombstone. Yeah, do we need Mori Povich in here? <laughs> Have I ever used red spice flour? Yep, absolutely beautiful. I also love to use like local Durham from the mill here, it's called Nootka Rose, just up in Saanich here on the island. Yeah, I like using all sorts of types of flowers. Wow, Palooza, you guys have a water mill there in operation since 1903 that still sells buckwheat flour. Have you got it before? Okay, 120 mils of our sourdough discard. So you wanna make sure that it has been fed, the way to test it if it's ready to go. If you pour a little bit of your sourdough starter into cold water and it floats, you're good to go. Yeah, buckwheat pancakes, that's the one. Okay, just getting my little measuring cup here. I wanna make sure I had my math right, and I did. That's the thing is like, when you're not good at math and you try and do it in your head, you still don't trust yourself. <laughs> but I did have it. Yeah, semolina is more for pasta, for sure. That That's what the Durham was, actually, Laughing Wolf. So there we go, here's our Goldilocks number three. And she is almost two months old now. So I use pretty much any flour except AP and double zero. I don't use double zero too much because it's really expensive for us to get here. It's like 20 bucks a kilo, something insane last time we tried to get it. But I do use an all purpose. Here, I'll show you the bay egg just all wrapped up here, but we also did just pick up two more of these from Bradley yesterday to stock back up. So that's what it is. True grain, organic, 
light BC. And that's like the fanciest flower I've ever used. <laughs> yeah, 20 pound bag. What the heck's in here? Yeah, Vancouver Island is a little bit remote, but for the most part, we get almost anything we want. Okay, I can smell the olive oil. So I think we're good to go to get our onions into that pot. Let's just pop over here. Oh, yes. Okay, ready? It's gonna be a nice sizzle when we pop that in. Onion and celery. Looking at this pot, I don't think we're pushing the limit too much. Should be perfect size. Then we'll give that a stir. And then it should cook for about 10 minutes until everything is nice and golden brown. Also, this is the worst light ever. I think we'll benefit also by just putting a touch of salt onto these vegetables as they cook. Just a little sprinkle. It will help to take some moisture out too. Okay, so that's gonna be just cooking on the stove top for us. We'll keep our eye on it. Oh yeah, View knows how to create a counter because he has Sam's Chewbacca one. I know, we need the bag counter. Mm, you guys talking about soba? Please guys, please. Okay, how much salt we need in here first? We're gonna go with a teaspoon of salt. Is smelling good. Get that hood fan on. Okay, and it says we just need a spoon or a little spatula to mix this up with. Boom, with our sourdough. Scrape all that goodness out. So this is gonna be like kind of a shaggy dough to start before we putting our before we put our water in. And then I think I would recommend like a lukewarm water for this. Don't want to go hot because we don't really want to like kill the sourdough starter. And I don't think we want to go cold either. What? If you can make rose water but you can't go to a florist to buy the roses, to make it you have to grow or buy pre-made food safe. Yeah. Rose water is quite easy to find, actually. Just gonna put this flower away. Rose water in soba, something I would have never thought to do. Start drizzling in a bit of water. Gently mix it in. A 
bit more. This is the first time I've ever made roti or chapati at home. And it's something I really like to eat. That's looking pretty good. See how it's absorbing all the dry bits of flour there? Just need a bit more kind of underneath here. Looks like I'm mixing drywall. Hey, that's my day job. I'm pro at that. Yeah, we're mixing up some mud, guys, and we're gonna put this on the wall. If this is me mixing mud, it's actually not looking good at all. <laughs> Hey, your mud, your mud's a bit lumpy there. Let's check on our veggies back here. Oh yeah. Okay, so they're sweating. Moisture's getting cooked out and there's a little bit of browning happening. So now I can turn this pot to medium heat. Turn it down a bit. Cooking the veggies on a lower heat will give us some more depth of flavor. Will allow them to brown more evenly as well. So we'll just stir that every like three or four minutes, I would say. Hi, Flower. Good to see you. Happy long weekend to you as well. Yeah, that was a nice little surprise for Sam and I. I think it was like Wednesday or something. I was like, Sam. I just read that it's a long weekend. <laughs> He's like, what? Okay, now we're gonna get messy. I'm done with the water. It looks like I added about a cup worth from what I had. So roughly one cup of water. Now it says start kneading it to make it smooth. Obviously we'll be able to tell if we need more water at this point. Yeah, time to work all of those lumps out. And I guess if we add, if it feels like we added too much water, we can always just add a little bit more flour, right? That's the easy thing about making doughs like this. You can fix it. That is like gluey, guys. I would love to put this on my cutting board, but it's gonna just mess it up. So I'm just gonna do my best to keep this mess in the bowl. I know it looks really like soft still. There's a lot of flour that we haven't worked into this yet. But I think we do need just a touch more. And well, there's something to be said about the recipes where they let you add your own amount of water, right? You're probably not going to nail the amount on the very first time you make it. But the more often you make it, then you get a feel for it. So maybe I would suggest doing three quarters of a cup of water. this stuff back here in the pot. Slowly browning up there. Starting to get some color. Okay, one little sprinkle. Probably good. Just in case, I'll just pop this beside me so it's really handy to grab if we do need more. That is well, Palooser. Yeah, it kind of lets you play around with your own hydration levels and get different textures. So 
see if I can mix this with this little spatula. Oh yeah, that's starting to look better already. Okay. So the key for this dough, just don't have it too wet. Not too wet. And it's hard to work with. See how that totally changed it? Now it's like smooth. And we should be able to start working it like this. Kind of moving around the bowl to get all the flour off. And then once we're done working it and we feel good, then we'll let it rest. Maybe a bit more still. Go, go, go. And then when we're kneading it, we're also creating structure with the gluten. So that's how your flatbread or your chapati, roti, whatever you want to call it, is going to stay together. That's looking better. See how it's smoothing out? Let's come over to the stove top. I do have messy hands, so. No judgment, please. Just wanna show you guys how this is looking. So I'm gonna say maybe five more minutes with this. You can see how the onion and celery is still pretty pale in color. So we can definitely go even deeper with that. That's gonna be my last bit of flour that I add and then we'll let this guy rest. And all we gotta do is divvy up the dough into 12 pieces. And then I think we have to roll it out to get it flat. This might be a really good spot if you have a tortilla press to use that. So I think we're gonna try that first before anything else. It's typically what I do when I make pitas at home, so I think this is probably going to be very similar. Okay, that looks good. And yeah, we'll leave our flour just beside because I'm sure we'll need it when we go to flatten these out. I'm just going to rinse my hand. And then let's just keep our dough from drying out. So pop a like tea towel over it or just a piece of plastic wrap. job and thank you <laughs> Actually, let's do this little one I think that's gonna be the next emote oh Claire helped you thanks Claire thank you thank you hey guys all of the hard parts of the meal are complete Go over here now to the stove. See how this is doing. One more stir. It's almost time for the garlic and ginger, almost. So while we wait, let's get ourselves organized for the chapati. So divide the dough into 12 equal parts. To roll it, dip a ball of dough in the flour on both sides and press it flat. Roll it into a not so thin, but even circle. Those are the worst directions ever. Set it aside and repeat the same with the rest of the balls. I would love like a little quarter inch guide or eighth of an inch is always great to know the thickness that we're rolling it out to. 
So with that being said, I think we're gonna use the tortilla press just to keep everything very consistent. So every single chapati is gonna be the same. It says heat a flat pan on medium flame. Place the rolled out roti. Within a few seconds, you should notice bubbles on the surface. Flip it over and then it says drizzle some oil over it. When both of the sides have dark golden spots, remove it from the heat. It says you can also put it on direct flame. Oh man, so for those of you that have a gas stove at home, if you want, cook it for 10 seconds on each side, literally right on the burner. Cool. It says serve hot with any gravy or curry. Okay, tortilla press. Cause I'm gonna say these will be maybe around six inch diameter, six to eight inch diameter for these. Cleaning up the area. Let's put our Goldilocks in the fridge to keep her safe. Safe and sound. Our flour is just in front of us, set up on the rolling station. Seeing those onions sweat makes you want to make some French onion soup. That is one that I absolutely love and have not had in a long, long time because as we all know, Femi's kind of an onion hater. So that's only probably something I get if I go out to a restaurant and eat. I just can't justify making like one portion of French onion soup for myself. Oh yeah, okay. This is what we're talking about. So it's been cooked down. It's almost lost about like half of the weight as well. Nice golden brown color. So let's add in very fragrant aromatics, ginger and garlic. The ginger is minced, the garlic is sliced. Mix that in and we'll cook it for probably five minutes as well. And then we'll add our spices to this. And then the tomatoes, the coconut milk, the broth, all of the things. Bring it up to a simmer. Onion haters. Come on, man. I think while we wait, I only have like one last thing for garnish is just to chop up some of these roasted peanuts. It says about half cup worth to use in this stew and for garnish. So we'll just do that while the onion and ginger is cooking. You're a huge onion fan. Man, onions are in pretty much everything, right? Like they are the base of so many dishes. Yeah, he only likes the big ones, Palooza. <laughs> okay, drive safe, Nike. You wanna get the waifu. Let's give this a stir. Smells so lovely. Chop those peanuts. And yes, you want them roasted. Nuts are always better roasted. It's so, so easy because they have their own oil built in. So you literally just have to put them in the oven or in a pan on a nice medium heat couple minutes guys that's all it takes just concentrates the flavor of the nut yeah onion and everything because it just makes everything taste good 
sweetness, right? It's the caramelization, I think. That is like some of the best onion flavor. Okay, garnish complete. And then what else are we thinking for like a fresh herb garnish? Would this be good with cilantro? She doesn't really say anything in the recipe. Oh, she also wants to say that it's more of a cultural mashup. So that's why she didn't call it the West African peanut soup. So stuff like the kale, like the greens, and then the coconut milk is actually not super traditional. So it's more like a spiced tomato and peanut stew. But I do love the coconut milk being added here. Okay, so we're gonna do a teaspoon each of turmeric. Actually, I'm gonna do half a teaspoon of turmeric and one teaspoon of garam masala or curry powder, whatever you have on hand. Hello, Annie, great to see you. <laughs> I loved your little message in Discord this morning, Annie. Yeah, what are you crazy kids doing up early? Well, I was up at 6.30 this morning because I was getting ready to do my meditation and yoga at 7 a.m. That's what time I'm always up. The daylight's a burning. I mean, when the sun is up at 4.45 in the morning, it's like, well, what are we doing just sitting here in bed? Yeah, okay. We are at the right spot here. Let's get our measuring spoon. Parsley? Oh, I got lots of parsley. We can do a little mix of parsley and cilantro. That'd be yummy. Team soap. Yeah, soap for the win. Okay, this is gonna give us lots of nice color, the turmeric. Not a little bit of flavor, but not much, right? Turmeric's a really one, or a really hard one for me to try and describe the flavor. Garam masala. So what's, oh, it doesn't tell us what's in the garam masala. It just says spices and herbs. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. Let's stir in our spices. Now it's super fragrant. So good smelling, wow. You can see how the yellow color is being brought out as well. Yum. Cumin, coriander, and cardamom. That's, oh, that's so simple, Annie. And garam masala. Garam masala, deeper in color, sweeter in taste, and spicier compared to typical yellow curry powder. Results in addition of cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom, cloves, and dried chilies. Whoa. Yeah, I guess everyone makes their own little garam masala, right? Okay, next thing I'm putting in here, we're gonna kind of deglaze with the coconut milk. Scoop all the goods out. Stir that up. Yum. I think curry is definitely one of my favorite preparations for like vegan or vegetarian foods. Okay, pour our diced tomatoes in. Different regions have different combinations of the garam masala. It makes sense. 
everything is regional, mostly for food, because it's whatever you can get your hands on in the area. I mean, Bonkman, this is how I would prepare the recipe. I'm not even following what she has told us to do, but she does give you like directions for stovetop, for the instant pot, for the slow cooker. So like for the slow cooker, put everything in the slow cooker except the peanut butter and kale and cook on low for six hours. You're not gonna get nearly the same flavor in that just sitting together with no searing at all or like no browning of any of the ingredients. So I would say stovetop still the best way to go if you can take the time to do it that way. Okay, stir that in. And then we're gonna come in with the sweet potato. Oh, also our handful of chilies. Yes. Those are dried Thai red chilies that we grew last year. Okay, here's all of the veggies. Load it up. Just got real healthy. And then to that, we're just going to pour enough of our chicken broth because I'm not vegan, just to cover the sweet potatoes so they can simmer properly. How does that look? I don't want it to be really, really thin, so that's why we're only pouring enough liquid to just cover everything in there. And we'll add our chickpeas now too. I won't mind if the chickpeas like break down a little bit and semi thicken everything up on their own. Okay, we now have all of the things that we need in the pot other than the peanut butter. A derp. You do the prep bonkman and add to a slow cooker in stages. Yeah, cause you can do that in a slow cooker, right? You can do a little bit of sauteing action with your veggies. It might be quicker to do that on the stove tops though, right? Okay, we can get our chicken broth gone for now. And let's see, how much peanut butter do we need? I believe it was a quarter cup. Quarter cup of peanut butter. Oh, she actually adds that at the end. But we will add the peanuts now. And then we'll reserve just a little bit of the peanuts to sprinkle on top for garnish after. So a bit of peanut flavor getting put in now and then the creamy peanut butter at the end one more thing i'm gonna do is just a little bit more salt to season the sweet potatoes as they cook it was like a couple teaspoons worth and then i want to put a little bit of black pepper to simmer away in there teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, and then like I said, for this size of sweet potato, I mean, this will probably take about half an hour to cook out on the stove top. So that gives us more than enough time to cook our chapatis on the side. Our dough is rested up now, so we'll divvy it up and flatten them out and start cooking. I think I wanna do this in a cast iron pan as well. So I am not gonna use a flat pan like she said, but we want a nice pan with 
a good amount of surface area. And I'm gonna turn that onto a medium heat. Hey guys, that's warming up. Here is our little flattening station. So I'm using my tortilla press. This thing is not expensive at all. And actually, we'll divvy up our stuff first. Get this big guy out of the way. You remember this setup? Yeah, it's been used a few times. Oh, that looks and feels great now. It's like not sticking to my fingers. Feeling good about it. Let's get our bench scraper. And honestly, guys, I think I'm just going to do this on the board. Push it. Push it real good. What a dough. There's some gluten in there for sure. And I get that bowl starting to soak. That's a dope dough, says Annie. Maybe we'll flip it over too. Wow, it turned out really nice though. So we gotta get 12, 12 little dough balls from this. Just kind of make it even before we divvy it up. So I'm gonna go in half lengthwise. then into quarters and then each of those are into three that looks pretty even did you know today's national avocado day i did not know it annie one might say I dropped the ball. Oh, that turned out so nice. Love avo. Avo would be so good in this too, even though it's not traditional at all. Okay, so we're going to ball up the chapati first. So clear some of the flour from the board. And then we're gonna do our typical little bun forming technique. Get a nice circle. I'm gonna just pop that there for now. It's also raspberry cake day. Mm. I don't know if I've ever had like just a raspberry cake, but raspberry and chocolate for sure. <laughs> Flour, yeah, I prefer raspberry cake than avo. She's a bit sticky. If it's wanting to stick, just reflower it. Wonder if anyone's combined avocado and raspberry before. Oh, probably, Annie. I wouldn't put it past us. <laughs> yeah, flowers like, uh, just no, please. Please, guys. Okay, that stew is almost simmering. Now, we were having some pretty deep conversations earlier, Annie, in chat. Like thinking back to the first people who were like discovering ingredients for us and like how they felt and how that affected their lives. Yeah, cool. Probably made an avocado cake and added raspberry. What I was thinking was like a salad with raspberry vinaigrette was my thing and it had avocado in it 
That just shows how different our minds work. I'm right. Thank you. <laughs> We're rolling, rolling, rolling. You can't do avo in a crispy salad. What <laughs> part you're saying? Sorry. Bad texture memories from childhood. Man, I didn't really grow up with like a lot of avocado until I was a bit older. Like it just wasn't really a thing up here. Or at least in our family, let's say. You have it every day in salad. Well, someone like you though, Annie, needs those good fats to like keep your weight up and everything, right? You're having it twice a day, whoa. That is some uh, fiber, digestible fiber in the diet for sure. Okay, let's roll these in the flour so they don't stick in the tortilla press. Mom put avo in salad because dad liked it. And that's like kind of surprising too. Never met like many dads that are like in love with Avo. The pan for these feels perfect right now. Just roll a f what two more of these and then we're pressing. So it gave you two options in this one flour. It said you can use whole wheat flour or atta. And then I did my own thing where I used our like whole grain white flour, our fancy all purpose flour, let's say. And then we added some sprouted buckwheat flour for that like whole grain sort of feel and digestibility. So yeah, we took the recipe and made it our own. Whether we improved it, well, we're gonna find out. <laughs> but I thought the buckwheat would be like a really nice nutty kind of touch. So as you can see, my tortilla press, I always have it lined with just a Ziploc bag that I cut the edges open with. It helps it not stick to it. All you do, press that down, flip it, and let that do all the work. You don't really need to put a lot of effort on it. So that one is like uh, maybe a quarter inch thick. I think I wanna go a bit thinner. But the first one's always a tester for me as well. That's why I usually make extras just in case something weird happens, right? But that looks really great. That's pretty effortless. So let's go over to the stove, try this out. I don't believe we need any oil in the pan for this. Heat a pan on medium flame, place the roti on it until it bubbles and then flip it. Okay, that's the easiest thing ever. Hello, Shadow Badger. Great to see you. It also shrunk up a little bit as I took it off of there. So it might benefit from like a little stretch out. Or we'll switch everything up that we're trying to do and we'll just use a rolling pin. As with all things in cooking, there are many, many ways to do one task. Nice little sizzle as soon as we dropped it in there. Check out how this guy is looking. Give it a little stir. Mm. 
Nothing yet. But I can tell it is cooking. Okay, let me just take this press out of here for a sec. I'll try one with the rolling pin and I'll see what I like better. We're really not in a rush right now. That was way too thick, I'm gonna say. That's like a heavy weight flatbread. We gotta go way thinner. Or I just messed it up and I didn't use the right flour. But I would say probably just too thick where wasn't able to like aerate because you can see the bubbles on that side starting to form. I mean, we all know how thin we roll tortillas. could have just gone way thinner so if you're gonna do tortilla press just make them a lot smaller so you are able to get it nice and thin otherwise these are just too large for the press that I have yeah it was just starting to puff up so I'm actually gonna flip that and see if I can get it to cook through properly This is what I'm doing right now, by the way. This is gonna be so much better, I can tell already. It's like half of the thickness that we just dropped on there. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. careful it doesn't stick. That is basically as thin as a flour tortilla would be. That's the thickness that I got going on right now. And I think that's great. Munchies. Close to a pita, yep. Okay, Titan, you've been losing weight all year, a couple pounds a month. That's so good. Yeah, that is right on track. Oh, look, it did puff up. I just didn't have the pan hot enough. Yes. Gained three pounds just now. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, I love non bread. Really any of these, like quick little pan breads, let's call them. So good to munch on all the time. Okay, we are simmering. So let's turn this down now. Take this, our first thicker little chapati out and let's drop this other one in. And I'm also gonna turn the pan up just a touch. I think that was our other issue, just the heat was a bit too low. But man, mmm, what? I'm getting into this right now. Actually, I have to wait a sec because it's super hot. <laughs> Can't hold on to it even to tear it open with you guys. Burning my hands. Nice. You just hit 100k channel points. So what's it gonna be, Titan? Is it gonna be something bigger and better? I'm just gonna save them forever. Just a little bit of bubbles. We'll let it go a bit more. I also love 
making these kinds of breads at home because you can basically roll one out in the same amount of time that the other one cooks. So you're not just like standing there waiting. That is what we're looking for. Wow, Annie, 21 pounds since May. I was gonna say, that's really quick. Be careful that you don't lose too much weight too quickly. What's Sammy saying? Nothing yet. This is uh, really going for it. It's really going for the puff. About two pounds per week. Now it's more like one pound. That's really good then. I think when you get to that point, your body's like found its little happy, happy point. Okay, check it out. A fluffed up little chapati. I'll drop the other one in there and then I like to keep these just warm inside of a towel. Now that pan is hot, hot, hot. Just on a plate or in a little basket, whatever you can get your hands on. So take our tea towel from earlier when it was resting. put that guy on it and then just flip it over and that way it'll keep it warm and also help it from drying out boom now we're cooking glace gooseberries or glace gooseberries thank you for the follow welcome in okay i'm gonna go for the tear guys this was our first one, so it's not perfect by any means. Mmm, but it tastes really good. Woo! Really nice, like fresh bread flavor. You get the kind of like funk and flavor from the sourdough starter. Okay, now we got behind. I'm just gonna push that off the heat for a sec. Quickly roll out our next one. Yeah, that's what I thought. I was like, this stew is gonna need something to like scoop it up and sop up all the delicious sauce with. So I was like, it needs something bready for sure. And especially since it's vegetarian, right, is we need something to fill us up. Good to see you today, Snake. Hope you're doing well. And yeah, the, the peanut stew is just simmering away over there on the side. No meat today. We're doing a budget, a budget kind of freezer meal for Paul Titan. Is he, he redeemed this one with his 50K channel points. Don't worry, we'll have a lot of meat tomorrow on stream is our ribeye steak, food for the people, food for friends. We picked up a whole beef ribeye to cut the steaks out of with you guys tomorrow. So you get to do a little bit of butchery as well. We cooled that pan off nicely now. Okay, now we can catch back up. And yeah, no pressure tomorrow or, or anything, guys, but we're cooking two plates for my parents' anniversary. Absolutely no pressure, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Annie, cool.
I'm gonna turn this down right down to low. That burner is pretty powerful. <laughs> Can you cash in your channel points and request that you take a weekend off stream? What? You don't want to stream for a week? Or you just don't want me to cook? Yeah, I, I was gonna say it's not gonna happen because we're seriously going ham for partner. The only other thing I can think of, guys, why it's taking so long to get back, I'm... So one thing I want to really do this week is get my, like, channel trailer for Twitch done. I think that's maybe why they're holding it back, but I don't know why that would do it. Because you should be able to make your own choice of how you want your channel page to look. Yeah, who's gonna freak out? And then the great thing about this weekend, Titan, is we actually have a long weekend. So Sam and I have Monday off. And we are going to go to our secret little swimming hole and go for a really nice dip in the lake and go chill out for a bit. Have some summertime for ourselves. Yeah, for sure, Claire. I mean, we can try, right? And plus, that's something I've been wanting to get done for a good amount of time. Whew, almost just got a steam burn. Careful taking those out of the pan, guys. Yeah, will it be warm enough for that? Oh, it will. We should have gone yesterday. The potholes, yeah. But it's always packed there, Flower. Like, I, I still uh, don't trust people right now because of the pandemic. So I'm gonna go to our private lake that we've been told to make use of and that way be safe and not be around anyone at all except Sammy and the homeowner, but we probably won't even see Bob. Plus people have been really dumb around the potholes lately and like throwing glass bottles everywhere and stupid stuff like that, so. I'd just rather not deal with that. Oh yeah, other than yeah, going on weekdays where everyone's still at work, right? Okay, we're halfway through our chapati, guys. I'm just gonna keep rolling this out as we cook them. It's so sad. Like someone put a post on Meanwhile and Souk just last weekend, I think it was, or like on the Monday afterwards. They're like, we literally watched this group of people start throwing in beer bottles into the potholes, watch them leave, and then we're the ones cleaning up for like an hour after, because who does that? Come on, guys. Gotta take care of your parks. It's sad, right? It's like, I just, just gotta respect mother nature. Boom, so good. I love how those pop up. <laughs> yeah, Titan, kick their butts. No, that doesn't solve anything either. <laughs> the thing is, Annie, so here on the island, we have a hotline to call if we see American plates up here because they're not supposed to be here. So they're sneaking up to the island saying that they're just passing through to go up to Alaska when really they're just having their summer vacation. It's like, come on, man. But I do get it, like some people do work in Canada and America and they have their like work vehicle up here. So even though you report the license plate, it doesn't mean they're gonna do anything. 
Everyone's doing different things. That was a little bit dark, so I'm just gonna turn the pan down a touch now because it seems like it's regulated with heat. Thanks, Flower. Yeah, this is my first ever chapati experience and I'm loving it. Yeah, we're human. Why does everyone have to be so human, Claire? <laughs> What are you gonna do if you win the lottery and you wanna move there? Well, yeah, you'll, you'll just have to move here and be a citizen. We'll sponsor you, Titan. Now, I definitely can say it's starting to also heat up in the house. Just quickly pop this door back open. Scared the robin out of the bird bath. Sorry, bro. Yeah, exactly, flower. That's the best way to put it. <laughs> Nothing against you if you actually live here. Don't be breaking the rules. Are we ready for the flip? Yep. <laughs> Titan. <laughs> the truth comes out. We should uh, try one of the sweet potatoes in like a minute or two here. See how everything's simmering together. That looks so good. Yeah, Sam, you would. I don't think you'd even get there, Titan. Good luck trying to get that plate of food before Sam gets it. <laughs> Have a real fight on your hands there, bud. Okay, four more chapatis. She's sticking. a minute between the time you tell Sammy the food's ready and when he gets the plate. Yeah, you can do some food damage in one minute. Oh, it's true. So the key is for sure rolling the chapati nice and thin. Nothing's really falling apart. That's, that's a good sign so far. Peppers like to just float on top. Boom. <laughs> Sounds like I heard my name. Maybe you guys can work something out together there. <laughs> Sammy's always listening. Always watching, always listening.
Go for the flip. Back to dapping. You dap those baseboards. And then you can come home and have some food. <laughs> more to roll out and I'm thinking this is gonna time out just perfectly these are getting pretty large these chapatis here yeah do your work and then you can eat isn't that always how it is other than like when you first wake up and have breakfast yeah, I was gonna say, Titan, that cake is long gone. She's getting breezy out there. cake well you're gonna get raspberries tomorrow on stream picked up a really nice pound of fresh ones from thrifties yesterday for our pavlovas blueberry and raspberry pavlova seconds more on that one yeah getting out of bed is a uh, pretty hard work on some days isn't it supposed to get a storm later this evening there's a small chance that a hurricane will come that way as well Titan be careful man just in like Storm Central, hey? Seriously though, be safe. for the flip just another year to you guys in North Carolina oh I guess yeah mmm man that is good I actually like it thick too the chapati got a bit more chew to it okay last one So that means I can clear all of the flour off of my cutting board. And like I said, we're gonna taste our stew. Should be pretty near being done. All we gotta do is pop our greens in. So if our sweet potato is cooked through, we'll pop those broccoli greens that we chopped up into there. They can cook down a touch. way easier to use a rolling pin on those than a tortilla press. Now we know.
Didn't even make that much of a flowery mess either. Okay, let's go for a flip. Super duper hot. Okay, one last wipe of the cutting board. Got all the flour off of there. Didn't actually do too bad on this stove top this time. Hey, Paul! This stream's for you, man! Yeah, oh my blob, food. We're just tasting our little sweet potato peanut stew here. See where everything's at. Hopefully be finishing it off. How's the day, my dude? My fellow Canadian. Grab a little spoon here. Take a piece of sweet potato. This is our test. Still a bit of crunch. We got a bit more. I'm gonna turn that up a touch. Okay. I'm gonna take my other bathroom break real quick and then we'll get set up to finish this off. I would say hmm, 10 more minutes. Hold tight. Okay, my people, I'm back. Mostly sleep and polish. Had some messed up but hilarious Tinder-related dreams. What? That sounds hilarious. Oh my god, I just realized how covered in flower I was. Suit of armor for the win. <laughs> messed up Tinder dreams. Why? Wow, you've been uh, on the prowl. Imagine if they like banned the Tinder app because of COVID. <laughs> Kitchen Samurai. Miss Atlantis Sims, hello. Welcome in. How's it going? I think you would totally destroy this pot. I think I picked a really great recipe for you. Healthy, filling, all things that I think you have access to where you're at. And she also says that you can freeze it afterwards for meal prep. Okay, so all we have left to put into that pot is quarter cup of peanut butter, and then a handful of our greens, whatever you want, kale, we use broccoli greens, you can use collard, even cabbage I think would be good. It's that time on a Friday, Bonkman, already? Oh no. 
Okay, sir, thank you so much for being first as always and hanging out for, well, all of the stream that you could. I hope you have a wonderful day at work. Don't work too hard. And we'll see you tomorrow for our very tasty steakhouse dinner and pavlova. It's actually true. It's actually true, Titan. So this, this just in this week uh, from BC, the CDC, Center of Disease Control, they are advising, I don't know what to say, people to use glory holes. It's like, what? Pretty sure it went viral, but they were serious. Late night stuff, guy? Hello. Are the pots from Lay Crew set? Uh, the one we're cooking in is not actually both that we are cooking in today. We're not. This one is a less expensive brand from Legastina. And I got it from Canadian Tire, I believe. And then our other one that we are just cooking in chapatis in, that one's a Staub Brazer. But I do have a couple pieces of Lake Crusade as well. It's all about just once again not buying things full price, waiting for it to go on sale, and investing in quality cookware that will outlast you. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, Williams. Yeah, the BC government recommending to use glory coals. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah, the gay friends thought it was something. They're just like, what? What? Why? Okay, well, so far, guys, I have to say this is one of my favorite meals. Even though we heated up the kitchen a bit with it being hot and summery out, is we barely made any dishes, though. So we have, like, two of those pots right there, the plate from the chapati, and the bowl from the dough. That's it. I am not opposed to that. You adore your Legacina layered pots. They're unreal for the price. Yeah, totally. Totally. Like, how good is that, Bee Bubs? Yeah, one pot cooking. And like we were talking about earlier, because this is going to be a spicier dish, spicy foods keep you cool in the summer. Polish says there's not really much seasonal cooking there because so much gets shipped in produce-wise. I feel you, man. Like depending on where you live and what grows with the season. I know your guys' season where you're at, Polsh, on like East Coast is at least half of the amount of season that we have, maybe even less. So you don't get the same amount of produce that we get here. Thanks, late night stuff guy. Yeah, I do enjoy that green color. Of all the things I've cooked in that pot, I think it still makes like some of the best roasted pork shoulder ever for braising. The exactly Beebubs also great to see you, man. Can we get a shout out for Beebubs in chat? A fellow food and drink streamer. If you have not gone into his stream yet, please go check him out. He does some amazing things and he's always up to something new. Like what were you doing last week? Brewing beer? I love that. Thank you, Annie. Question, who likes a fresh tomato sandwich with mayo? I'm into that. It's like a good, a good tomato that's like just been picked on some nice crusty bread and some mayo and salt and pepper. Yeah, I'm into that. Yeah, Annie's a brewer as well, guys. Paul, you have so much rapini growing in a planter. What? I've never grown rapini before. I think you'll put some more in the garden where the spinach and kale didn't take. That is weird. That like even the kale didn't take in the garden because to me, that's like one of the easiest things to grow. Okay, I just want to see how our sweet potato is now. Should be softer than when I tasted it before. And if that's the case, we're gonna put in the peanut butter and the greens and finish this off. Get our garnishes together and we'll plate up. 
Yeah, seedlings is that's the thing. If you're going from seedlings, so much water at the start polish because as soon as the root gets dry, you're done pretty much. Mm. Okay. Sweet potato is like edible. It's just a little bit of crunch left in there. I think we're good to go. So we need like a quarter cup of peanut butter. I'm using a natural crunchy one with no salt. Let's just go blarg. Because <laughs> my jar was so full. And we'll just use this spoon to kind of get it off of there. You learned a lot this summer with growing stuff. Some of the tomatoes you grew yourself from seed are starting to flower. Nice, man. Oh, nice bee buds. Yeah, you're having an off sort of day. For someone who has streamed for like a few years now, I'm going to say every now and then you do need it. Just like to have a day with yourself and just be like quiet. <laughs> and not have to entertain people, right? Is It's a lot of work, man. I feel ya. And I think it's very important that you take care of your well-being. That's the thing is, as much as you think that your viewers are gonna be like upset that you're not on stream, no, they're more concerned about you as a person and being okay. <laughs> That's what I always thought. I always felt so bad if it's like, I, I think I need a break. But then you don't take it and it just gets like worse. Yeah, take care of yourself. It's good to see and good to see that you know when you need it. Late night tough guy, are those cashmere chilies? They are not. They are just some Thai reds that we grew last year and then I just dried them. Okay, let's get these broccoli greens in. We cut them up into kind of like roughly one inch size pieces so they're not stringy when they cook down because, well, everything needs to be easy to eat with a spoon. And now definitely have a full pot. And I don't think I would cook this to the point where the sweet potato is like falling apart and super soft. Talking about this earlier is like big thing with people and sweet potatoes is the texture, especially for me. Like I can't do them boiled on their own. It's just too mushy. It's like a gag worthy thing. <laughs> So in this instance, way better to keep a little bit of texture. Like I said, maybe a little bit al dente, so they're easy to eat, but still, still there's a bite there too. Yum, so a couple more minutes on that just until the greens are cooked. Yeah, you missed a little interstellar polish. I picked those big old broccoli leaves from the garden. Oh, you like Belgian ales as well? Me too. Belgian blondes? Dude, so much flavor in them. Cookie, you thought you wouldn't need a break from work having worked from home all this time. I was amazed when I took a day off how much more refreshed you were. Yes. Yeah, totally. Oh yeah, Bebo's your fiance had the same thing happen with her. I'm into it, Annie. Yeah, I'm into the sweet potato if they're like really soft, as long as there's a ton of butter and a ton of cream and like garlic in there. Just cover up the sweet potato with a ton of dairy and I'm in. <laughs> Bee tree, hello. Plus a Mahalo Titan for the gift sub. Welcome in. Oh my gosh, are you Hawaiian? We were supposed to go there this year for uh, my husband and I's honeymoon didn't happen, but hopefully next year. So this is like one of my top spots that I need to go see. 
What Bee Bobs? You made a Saison. Also one of my favorites. Yeah, sour beers. Like, I don't really hate any beers, but sours and Belgians, Saisons, so good. Just give this a little stir. Almost there. Secret for the Belgian blondes is Belgian candy sugar. Wait, like the stuff that they put in the waffles? No way that's the secret, Annie. Like this stuff? You're gonna be listening in, Paul. You need to get some food in you or you'll lose the lovely lady curves. Yeah, you don't want that, man. Rattlers are so good in the summer. We've been trying to get the, like a local brewery here, Parallel 49, their Rattlers sold out everywhere. This is not my recipe. It's inspired by a recipe I found online. So please feel free to check it out. Oh, we broke stream elements, I guess. So there's that. But <laughs> recipe, we should have two recipes linked there. Thanks, Cookie. I don't know why that didn't work on my end. But sweet potato peanut stew from Pinch of Yum. And then cooking from heart is where we took the chapati recipe from. Bee tree, gifting a tier one sub to Miss Atlantis Sims. First time gifting a sub in the channel paying it forward from their gifted sub from titan thank you so so much for that bee tree i absolutely adore that you do that it is not asked for but thank you so much for playing a part in building up our food and drink community we are all food lovers here and well there's something to be said about sharing a meal together Oh, this is uh, really coming together now, isn't it? Okay, I think I'll go get those few sprigs of parsley and cilantro from outside. Now we're pretty much there. Also, hello, Strike Nun. Good to see you. Okay, be right back, guys. Actually, gonna take my kitchen shears. Parsley, cilantro, that's the garnish, as well as some peanuts. anyone needs parsley just uh feel free to come on over and i don't know if you guys have ever let your cilantro go to seed but it's actually really beautiful and so fragrant Boom. And then our parsley. Yeah, the fresh cilantro smell. Like it's so fragrant though when you let it go to seed. This was a little trick. We were actually just working at a house with an East Indian family and we noticed that all of their cilantro they were growing has gone to seed. And they're like, yeah, we do that so that we get better flavor from it. And we're like, what? So now I did that too this year and I've been loving it. It's like almost a sweeter kind of flavor. 
thanks, late night tough guy. Yeah, I think we're pretty equipped here. I've been cooking professionally for oh, almost 10 years now. And it's just important for you to have the proper cooking equipment at home. <laughs> Strike Nun's got the stupidest story. I love your stories. AC went out at the girlfriend's, pulled the panel off of the unit, spent a bit of time only to find out that the relay that activates the compressor had a bug stuck in it. Earwig crawled in the contacts and it went to turn on and smushed it and couldn't make a connection. Oh, I despise earwigs. I think they're like my number one top hated bug out of every bug that's out there that I have seen. And I've seen some crazy stuff in Southeast Asia. I still hate earwigs the most. They're so like, ugh, just like slimy and sneaky. And the shell, exactly. Try and kill them and they just don't die. <laughs> okay, let's come over to the cutting board. I'm actually just gonna turn this off now, guys. I know she is donezo. You're from Hawaii, ne? Stranded on the mainland by pandemic for the duration. 14 day mandatory quarantine in the island still in effect as far as you know. Yeah, we're not, everything's been canceled on our end for the trip this year. Nothing is going ahead. Heck, who knows? Maybe even next year is not a thing either, right? By the way that things are going. Oh my goodness, Annie. Ugh. I just got like shivers almost. An earwig infestation. No. You still hate mosquitoes more, Flower. Yeah, because when they buzz in your ear. <laughs> okay, we're just fine chopping the parsley and the cilantro. Thought it'd be nice to do a little mixture today. And then, yeah, like B-Bubs was saying, maybe use our cilantro flowers for garnish and make it look really pretty. Cheapest AC fix ever though. Scrape the bug off with a screwdriver. Zero dollars. Time spent though. <laughs> Holy. Yeah, cilantro gone to seed, so fragrant. There we go, a little bit definitely goes a long way in that instance. And I think I'll just put that in a container and mix it together. So we get an even sprinkle of flavors. mountain lion lions and venomous snakes here yeah we just have bears cougars I don't think there's wolves on the island I could be wrong though just bears cougars and wolves strike them we got bears on the property as well mice snakes tons of wasps rabbits did I mention wasps okay wasps are insane this year where we are it's like where are all the bees it's seriously just wasp infestation terrifying Yeah, those older Canadian women could be dangerous. Watch out. <laughs> okay, give that a little mix. So we got our nice fresh herb garnish as well as our chopped peanut garnish. Always kind of showcase what you're serving as well. Shall we come over with the stew and take a look at it over here? I think so. Something about this view. the skin that it's starting to form. I think we've perfectly cooked this, guys. Just 
actually I'll keep those cloths. Yum. Even the chickpeas haven't even fallen apart. Well, it definitely took us longer than half an hour to make this, like the recipe said, but it's for good reason because we took the time to like cook all the vegetables properly and build up our layers of flavor rather than just throwing everything in the pot and turning it on. Cause that's okay too, but not nearly the same amount of flavor. Wow, bee tree, no tourism, no jobs. No jobs means no work, which means no money. You just have to hang out on the beach and go fishing. I mean, I'm okay with that. I like fishing, but there is something to be said about like the stress of not having a job, right? Okay, I'm gonna try our broth. I think it definitely needs salt. Thank you, flour. Yeah, looks tasty, healthy. Mmm. It turned out really nice. And the fact that we put chicken bone broth in instead of water, also way more flavor. Okay, I think we need one, two things of salt to start. And then maybe a little bit of balance with, what would you guys do? Either lime or lemon for acidity? I think it could benefit from a little hit of citrus juice just to kind of brighten all the flavors up. Ooh, a drop of plain yogurt. That would look really nice to flour. Add the bit of creaminess. Or like if I still had some coconut cream, a drop of the coconut cream. Keep it dairy free. <laughs> yeah, Nike would agree. Lime, I was into that too, strike then. Mmm. It's always so crazy when you add salt, how much brighter the flavor is. Perfect, I have a half lime here to use up. Cannot wait to dip the chapati in. That was a very juicy lime. <laughs> You're gonna have a chapati mouth. <laughs> That was a good one, Annie. Watch it. Watch your chapati mouth. And I will say the spice, we could have easily put six of those peppers. Heck, maybe even more. Not that spicy at all. Great colors, yeah, I am loving this. I'm gonna try and get that, like this thing in a photo after stream. The nice pot. Okay. I'm thinking white bowl. I'm thinking white bowl. The wok bowl just doesn't really make sense in this instance. What kind of kale is that? It's not kale at all. It is a sprouted broccoli green, which we did a bit of discovering about it on the last stream too. Sprouting broccoli. So it's a purple sprouting broccoli. Just looking at the guide here to see if I can tell you anything about it. <laughs> no results found, thanks. Thanks for that. There you go, BBC. 
So purple sprouting broccoli, a great flavor, long harvesting season, and extremely good for you. A single portion provides half your daily requirement of carotenoids, plus high levels of folic acid and vitamins A and C. So like other brassicas like kale, purple sprouting broccoli thrives in a fairly heavy alkaline soil. Sweet. And it's very hardy, tolerating temperatures as low as minus 12 Celsius. That is very good to know. Okay, let's get a big ladle and I'll ladle our stew into our bowl. Let's get our, why don't we pop the chapati right here. And we'll open that up in a sec. How many types of kale are there? Oh goodness, yeah, so many types of brassicas. Like I think when I was at volunteering at the farm, we were growing at least six varieties of just kale alone. getting really windy and there's stuff falling outside. I was like, what was that? I thought maybe a bird ran into the window or something. It's breeze. There we are. Let's wipe the rim. Keep it clean. Excuse me. Did you say you made chapati waffles? No, I didn't. That sounds like a madness though, Beebubs. Is that possible? Chapati waffles. <laughs> okay, what do we wanna do first? I think I wanna do the herbs first for the hit of green and then we'll sprinkle the peanuts on top so we can see them. Nike, thanks man. Is this something you could eat, Nike? No, that's probably not, this is not keto. There we go. <laughs> no. Yeah, Bebubs, I was about to be very impressed. Chapati waffles. How would we even make that? Okay, Bebubs wanted our little flowers our cilantro flowers. Pro tip, never put any garnish on the plate that you wouldn't eat with the food. So those times where you see a whole sprig of rosemary on the dish, worst garnish ever. So yes, these flowers are edible. Please make sure of that before you use them in your dish. do three actually I think I want to do five and that's the other thing you always want like odd numbers when you're plating that looks good okay now we open up the chapatis I don't know if I want that one for the photo this one was like the most perfect in my mind Tuck that little tag under, kind of have it so it's like peeking out, I guess. We're going for it. Thanks, Beebubs. I actually love lavender, Annie. I was kind of torn this week because typically when I do my berry pavlovas, I put culinary lavender in the meringue and like bake the meringue with lavender and it's so, so good, especially with strawberry. But yeah, that's what I like to do. Yeah, strawberry and lavender is a great pairing. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow, fancify it. Cause I find that in that instance, it's not overpowering. Okay guys, I am loving how this is looking. 
even just on the photo. What a beautiful dish. Yeah, a very traditional Vancouver Island <laughs> ingredient. Boom. Let's get into it. We only need one utensil here, and that's a spoon. Hey, Joshua Klein, good to see you, man. Thanks for popping in, as well as Meta Monkeys. Hi, hi. Hope your day is good. Tombstone says, depends. I would say only time sprig of rosemary is successful as steak, because the heat of the steak will cause the oil of the rosemary and fragrance, but to me, the only time is fine. Each chef has their idolization. That's fair. Yeah, I am not with that one. I've just seen it done too many times, and it's like, I would never eat that. <laughs> okay, let's get into it. I'm excited for this one. Like a lot of time for us meat eaters. Vegetarian food is not that exciting, but this looks so good. Mmm. The peanut flavor is perfect. Like it's not overpowering. It's not too nutty. The sweet potato is cooked. It still has like, it's holding together, but it kind of just does melt in your mouth. And then you have the chew of the greens, as well as you get to chew through the chickpeas in there. And obviously the crunchy peanuts that we garnished on top. Get a little bit of sweetness from our pieces of tomato. And yeah, I would, spice this up about three times as much as I did today. I really have no heat on my palate right now, which is surprising because usually those dried peppers pack a lot of heat. Mm. Yeah, peanut is USA and Thailand. If you are anywhere else, I just want to keep those nice and moist. It'll call them ground nut. So ground nuts, AKA peanut. Okay. Whether you like eat it with your hands or just like take a scoop and then have a bite of this. Mm. It honestly makes the flavor better. Like this makes this taste stronger. Polish, this is so good, man. I think you're gonna love it. Okay, there was a link that I had with this recipe where she had it like costed out and stuff. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, I can't find it, but I'm pretty sure she had this costed out to about, I think it was $4 a portion or something super cheap like that. Peanut tones the spice a bit. Yeah, we should have added way more spice. Like I'm probably just gonna add some hot sauce now. This cilantro goes so good on top to you guys. Mm -mm -mm. A very nice healthy meal. Yeah. 
Okay, friends. We're wrapping it up. Gotta go eat the rest of this. I'm sure Sam's gonna be home. Oh, probably not even soon, actually. It's only 2.30. You gotta get it on the list. Polish everything is linked already in Discord for you if you want to cook this recipe for yourself. I pretty much followed it to a T. Definitely did like way more onion than they called for. But yeah, other than that, we basically followed it to a T and it turned out unreal. I didn't do any charred tomatoes for it. So I just used canned diced tomatoes. So yeah, that's the other thing is I even made it more simple because I found that the roasted, like canned tomatoes that were fire roasted are so expensive. It's like at least double the price of anything else. I was like, why? That's not necessary. So I would say as long as you like saute all of your veggies really properly and stuff like that and build up the flavor that way, you don't need the charred tomato. The only other thing I would say polish is if you wanted it, do it with fresh tomatoes instead of canned, like char the tomato yourself. Put it under the broiler in the stove. Sorry, I'm just like sweating. <laughs> it's hot in here now. Time to go outside and cool off. Yeah, it's more budget friend friendly. That's the thing. And then, yeah, she said you can easily freeze this. And then all you have to do is heat it back up. Everything's cooked. Fire roasted tomato does make a difference in salsa, Annie. The flavors are milder. Cool off outside. What? Because when you eat spicy-ish things, this one's a spicy-ish, but when you eat spicy foods and it's hot, it makes you feel cool and there's a breeze outside. So my sweaty ass is gonna cool off. <laughs> okay, Annie's excited for the asparagus tomorrow, as am I. So on the menu for tomorrow, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific as well, charcoal grilled ribeye steak with a wild mushroom demi, twice baked potato with aged cheddar and bacon topped with a chive sour cream, grilled asparagus with herb and garlic compound butter, and then for dessert, pavlova so crunchy and chewy meringue vanilla whipped cream fresh blueberry and raspberry boom that's what's on the menu tomorrow cooking food for friends we have i think six orders not like a huge huge order this weekend but we have six steaks to cook and that's okay because you want to focus on those steaks too yes get the asparagus and we'll cook it at the same time Oh no, strike none. Yeah, 100 degrees outside there, no breeze and 70% humidity. That doesn't sound like a good time at all. Wild Mushroom Demi, you're interested in that one? You should uh, pop in tomorrow then. Because that's one we're making from scratch. Okay, I... I'm just looking for someone for us to go raid. If anyone has any recommendations, by all means, let me know. Oh, what? Do we want to go see Ice Cream Posse? They got partnership on Twitch. You want to celebrate a new food and drink partner? I think we should. They were really fun last time we went in. Okay, Ice Cream Posse. He's awesome, right? So much energy and, well... I love ice cream, so there it is. Or is LA is on? Okay, we'll do ice cream posse. I do love LA as well. Yeah, everyone wants ice cream right now because it's so hot. Okay, I'm hitting that button. Also, we get to go celebrate his partnership. How awesome is that? <laughs> Such a good point, B-Bubs. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for the awesome stream today. Yeah, bye, friends. A lovely dish indeed. Super healthy and delicious as well. That That's important, right? When it's healthy, it's got to taste good too. And I will let you know what Sam thinks of it. 
Okay, same time tomorrow. You know what's going down. Steak dinner, pavlova. We will see you guys at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. That's all I got. Bye.